living expenses if you tend to i would say share the apartment with uh, flatmates or something comes around somewhere so my bachelor's was in uh, instrumentation engineering uh um, my interests were at that point of time and i had also worked in between for 3 4 years to gain industry experience was more or less in control systems so my choice for masters was to go for pretty much the same so i opted for masters in electrical engineering um focusing on control systems and i did it in like i would say the thesis based for not the project one I finished my courses on August 30th. I had my job offer on hand on September 1 or something. So yeah, if you if you start your preparations or giving interviews in time, you would be having something at the time when you're uh, finishing your studies. So yeah. it considered a lot of other countries. I did apply to the US and the Europe as well. So. yeah matlab uh, so yeah i had applied to i think around 8 or 9 i think total universities including canada us and europe i believe in the europe uh, i applied to dtu in denmark the denmark technical university i in the us i had applied to ncsc university of maryland if i remember correctly university of texas dallas and one or two more i don't we call which were them and in uh, canada like pretty much the general mcgill university uh, i think i applied to ubc um, university of alberta and yeah i did not apply to university of toronto because it was quite costly uh, so i believe these three or four were there in europe i received from btu i also received from that uh, like swedish university i don't remember its name but yeah those two were there uh, in the states i actually applied for the phd program because they are generally like uh, like fully funded but uh, ncsu provided me with an admit for masters that they said can be changed for phd and uh, university of texas dallas gave me a phd admit uh, i believe university i received a reject from university of maryland and the other one that i had applied to few of the things that i took in consideration was first of all i did not receive a phd from ncsu or from any other like like for funded thing so that was obviously one of the concern because studying in the us is pretty pretty costly and you need to be lucky in order to get back what you make in that three years and not get deported back so that was obviously there second concern was the like second point uh, for like canada was mcgill was is is one of the like top universities like coming in the top 15 or 20 in the world so that was obviously playing in the back of my mind and i would say the cost of living and studies were pretty decent the as much as i could like i would say being able to uh, like i had savings for that so that was obviously another point that came into its favor the third reason was uh, canada seemed to be a much more i would say uh, friendly place to be or i would say place where you can i would say get a permanent residency later on uh, so yeah those were the reason and i did not considered uh, i would say you know bt you and all the other places was uh, similar the cost was pretty high and uh, while going through the living i would say accommodation things in bt i found it a little bit hard and they were pretty much in their local language and yeah so there were a few few things which i thought like let's go for my dream living expenses if you tend to i would say share the apartment with uh, flatmates or something comes around somewhere i would say maybe at the max 7 or 800 dollars a month like staying and inclusive of foods and every food and everything uh like you can stay a little bit more lavishly under 1000 dollars but i think 7 800 is is the range that normally everyone over here is staying outside of the campus so that would come around i would say 9600 so approximately 10000 dollars a year for the living expenses over here
So for McGill University, I would say the first three semesters, if you are going for a thesis program, costs around I would say nine thousand to ten thousand dollar each semester or each term. And from the fourth term onwards, uh, it, it it is equivalent to what the Canadians would pay. So that comes at around two thousand or something dollars. So in total, you would pay somewhere around I think thirty three or thirty four thousand dollars in the two years that you would be completing. Montreal is a pretty, I would say, um, small bubble where most of the people normally tend to speak English, although French is spoken. But you would be able to, like, yeah, get get uh, your things done pretty much in English in Montreal at least, unless you go outside of this region. So that was not a major factor, like um, I would say, by studying over here or doing anything else. Although the government, like. Uh, provide certain incentives if you try to learn French because that might be helpful when you are going to land a job. If your job is like a client facing or something like that, then French will be required. Else, I think you will be pretty much good to go with English only. So, depending on the loan amount, for example, that we have taken, I would say the pretty standard or the average uh, salary that a person gets over here, if he's from an engineering or I would say technical background, would be around sixty or sixty-five or thousand uh, dollars Canadian dollars. So, after taxes and everything, you get around forty, forty-five, I believe. So, yeah, if you if you are not spending anywhere else, I believe you can pay back your loan within a year or year and a half. So after working in India, if you come in the I would say top I would say the thirty percent bracket, I would say you won't say that Canada charges a lot because it's pretty much the same out over here as well. Uh, although there is that like I would say difference uh, going from province to province. For example, I would say I think Vancouver or another I think Ontario might be on the lower side of taxation. Quebec is on much on the higher side. So on, in general, I would say I think I have to pay somewhere around twenty-seven or twenty-eight percent, uh, like tax tax rates over here. So yeah, uh, yeah. If you if you see it in that term, I would say it's not that high as in India. So. No, I would say part-time jobs like getting it is quite I would say easy. It's it's not at all difficult. Uh, like. I'm I'm not specifically like sure about the Toronto case, but I believe in most of the universities out over here, you have like uh, part-time jobs. First of all, inside the universities, like teaching assistants, research assistants, lab assistant, and there are others like lot of other things that you can do inside the campus as well. And as a student, you are given priority uh, when applying for those jobs, so those can be a pretty good option of getting uh, those part-time jobs. And even after that, if you really feel that is not sufficient, you can obviously go out and maybe apply to I don't know part time at a warehouse or maybe call center or uh, maybe restaurant or something like that. Although, like I have spoken with a lot of students and have uh, like mentioned it specifically to them, if you are actually going to go for an outside, uh, I would say part time job. First of all, there is a cap of twenty hours per week that you can do, which is not there for. in campus jobs so on campus jobs are unlimited and the second thing is just because you need to like would say you are going to save or you are trying to uh, get your expenses for the month uh, taking extra job or extra load can hamper the gpa later on which which still is a pretty i would say uh, something that the companies like look over here when you are applying so it's pretty much like what the indian situation is so if your gpa is pretty low then it gets really hard to get a job out here so if you are going to say about montreal anything that a person would firstly come over here would go to is something called an old port it's like the waterfront of montreal on the lake so that is there the second thing Like McGill University is just below what you call is uh, Mount Royal. It's like a small hill or mountain you can say, from where you can look at the whole Montreal landscape. So that is a pretty beautiful place to be normally. If you are an Indian and if you are coming out over here, you would obviously be going for trying out the Indian restaurants. So there are quite a lot of Indian restaurants over here, and you can get pretty decent, I would say, Indian food over here. So 
those things are sorted out over here as well so yeah in montreal these two are pretty much the thing if you are into the nightlife and all i would say montreal is pretty i would say lively at night uh, as well so yeah you uh, as a student i would say montreal for me was one of the like best places to study yeah guys go ahead give a like share and subscribe to mocket like it helped me and i hope it helps you too